people are reacting to these um, energetic shifts. Well, that's going to keep getting more and more in the next few So meditation is important then. Well, meditation much. gives you an awareness to be able to observe your dreams. Last night I had a very horrific dream. I was stuck with a family. Some of us were in the hospital and we couldn't get out. I mean, I'm condensing a really long, okay. involved, somewhat scary dream. Go ahead. Like being in a, a, a bus or a, a prison or it was hard to explain. Quarantine. And, and being kept from each other. I mean, it almost sounds like a condensed version of school, you know, public school, because you're made Sounds to sit, like a FEMA camp. <laughs> sit in a box, but it was more classy, like a hospital. Oh, okay. And, uh, but I woke up a little bit confused. You're like, wow, I was stuck in it with these people. Maybe it was just a, a symbolic pattern of my family, because I lived in a very repressed, sugar-addicted family. My dad had diabetes and smoked and basically killed himself with sugar, because it just rots your insides. It feeds so, cancer cells, too. Sugar. Yeah, yeah, and that's the acid. Remember I mentioned the acidosis mm-hmm. and stuff? So that's why the movement now is toward alkaline, uh, sea salt, uh, minerals, green vegetables, raw vegetables, raw dairy. I eat raw eggs and raw uh, meat sometimes. Uh, but just very much fresh local vegetables is very important to alkalize and to balance your yin and yang. Mm-hmm. And that's why Chinese, the Chinese foods and some of the Japanese, not the processed stuff, mm-hmm. is much more healthy than American food. That's true. Um, Kamut berries is heavier in their diet as well, the Egyptians as well. I, I, I didn't know about that grain until two years ago. And it comes from Egypt and has more wheat and amino acids, uh, has more protein and amino acids than conventional wheat, which, which uh, more people find out that it's really not the best thing for us to be eating, even though we have a situation with the wheat supply dwindling, it's not really the best for our bodies to be. Well, see, it isn't the wheat itself that's wrong, it's how they GMO. Pro- it's how, well, GMO makes it toxic, mm-hmm. but it's also the way it's processed. Okay, here's the thing on toast. This, okay. this was a game, a guy, friends of mine, we, I worked on these things in the mm-hmm. 70s, did a movie called Toast, and it showed that you, they kill wheat four times before you get to eat toast. They radiate it. No? Okay. Well, yes, but that's the cooking part. Because they kill the plant, they take off the grain, they mill the grain, they make the flour, they bleach the flour, and you cook it. That's six times. Six times this, this wheat berries are killed, you know, denatured, but by the time it gets in your mouth. So is that healthy or what? Well, I also it makes me think about water, too, and Uh-oh. the process that water goes through. I, In short, I want to sum this up. Watch a documentary that was called Water. It's about two hours, and that greatly expanded my awareness of water and how it's a store of memory and a transfer of information like a crystal or like our bodies. It's a holder of memory and information. And it talked about all the trauma that's held within the water from being blasted from point A to point B. It's not so much the water source, but the pathway of getting from here to there yeah. and the lack of sunlight. And so, um, well, pipe, pipes under cities is an example of that. Mm-hmm. But one of the memory things about water, or the magnetic things, is the water stores or carries minerals in it. Mm-hmm. Almost any mineral it comes in contact with, it will dissolve and, and carry it somewhat away, micro, micro away. Mm-hmm. Well, then that gets in your body, and so we've been. Uh, money time has made us unaware of all these micro things that affect us constantly. So how pure your thing, whatever you're eating is, how pure is it? Do, mm-hmm. they, do they teach that in school or on the media, how pure things are? In their natural state without being oh, tampered this is with? pure <laughs> chemistry. Enhanced with fluoride. Yes, to, uh, to keep your, well, fluoride's bad for the bones. I don't know, I have almost no teeth because of sugar addiction for 30 years mm-hmm. and crunch. Mm-hmm. I think those two things ruin my teeth. Oh, uh-huh. crunch, the crunch, crunch bars. Oh, there's a hundred different products, maybe two hundred, in the stores for Crunch. And they'll sell Crunch on TV. Oh, this is so crunchy! Well, it, healthy? Forget it. Mm-hmm. So we could go on for hours on this stuff. We sure could. And uh, there's other things that um, we're going to talk about as well. Let's bring up a couple more slides, Bill, of uh, some of the sacred geometry. Oh, we'll try to cover some that we haven't covered yet. Okay, this is a new one. Here's two. Now this, um, I call this Aries, because the, the the inside, the bottom one, is like the inside, and then the top is like the, the outer expression of Aries. Aries really wants to create something new, do something new, courage, discovery, adventure, leadership, war. And then that's 
This is kind of suggestive of that. Mm -hmm. Next. Do we have another one? Okay. This one I called Taurus. Now, Taurus is very strong, and it's the sign of the bull or the ram. Or not the, the bull or, yeah, the bull or the cow. And it just sits there, and it's the collector, the banker, the, um, the holder, strong voice. Stevie Wonder, David Byrne have our Taurus. And they tend to express not much, but really strong when it comes out. Mm -hmm. And they collect, collect. Taurus is a sign of the collectors and the managers of property. Mm -hmm. uh, where I lived in Hawaii, my Taurus friend has three acres and he grows sheep on them. Mm -hmm. So was that okay? There's another one. Now this is another Taurus. It's got two donuts. One you can see going around horizontal, and then one vertical in a spiral field. So what I'm showing here with the spiral field is that air is spiraling. And you don't really know that unless you gaze at the clouds. Mm -hmm. Then you get that air is spiraling. If you study, you know, the, the oral tornadoes, mm -hmm. dust devils, you know, whirlwinds, those are spiraling. So magnetic fields are spiraling. It's beautiful to watch a river where there's different spirals going in different directions at the exact same time. And well, they, uh, they kind of go in opposite directions. I was looking at the coffee cup at the coffee uh, shop earlier today and it looked like it had been set down about 10 different times. So you picked it up and it was just, it reminded me of all the slides that I just imported tonight. Yeah. Different circles going in different places. So back to what can we learn from spirals. And okay, so plants grow in spirals, mm -hmm. water in spirals. Now one of the things we do with, uh, this is an old grandma thing, because I, mm. I watch babies and grandmas and stuff learn from them. They spin it. They spin their, their cups. Mm -hmm. Well, babies will spin to play with it, mm -hmm. but the grandmas will just spin it. Right. And the herbs in it, and the tea and the water. So that's as energy to, or magnetic energy. When we flush the toilet, it spirals a certain direction as well. Yeah, in fact, most people only see spirals when they flush the toilet. <laughs> Which we really probably shouldn't be doing as often oh, I, as I we are. I want to go see some spirals. I'll go take a poop now and see my spirals. I mean, that's that's people living in homes, you know, mm -hmm. in square homes. So spirals are everywhere. If you think of, I, I've got a list of 120 mm -hmm. spirals. Drills, screws, nuts, ropes. See? Now nuts, that's what I was going to say next, bolts, the six-sided shape, yeah. that's, Hexa, every construction worker has seen the six-bolted shape, and what does that do? It holds those two elements together. Yeah, hexagons. Yeah. So in a way, hexagons are the strongest geometry, but they're made up of triangles. Wow. So triangles are actually stronger than hexagons, but as you get big, then you need multiple triangles. Now here's the, the, the uh, septicle again, the seven-sided one. We have one phone call, don't we, Bill? Okay, we'll go to that one in just a moment. Go ahead. Well, I just, uh, now this one, this is the uh, zodiac of the Mayan. I think they're called Botuns. Uh -huh. The Mayans had their own geometry, but as an empire, they crashed. Right. So there. I they mean, prophesied the end of their world and allegedly a world that uh, well, was they, a little bit they, further in the future. They were into really long cycles, so mm -hmm. they, were, they were able to predict. But see, it's not specific. They, weren't, they didn't know anything about what we're doing. Right. They were just predicting trouble. Right. Big, a cosmic trouble. A big trouble. cycle, a big epoch ending. A new a trouble. And, and then they crashed thousands of years. Right. Well, actually, there were different times that the mines crashed. I went to Guatemala, and there are lots of, there are thousands, there are probably millions of, of them in the bush. Bill, let's go ahead and go to that phone call. Hello, caller. Yeah, hi. Um, just wanted to make a comment. Um, when I was 19 or and 20 years old, I used to draw mandalas. I would start out with the Star of David. I would make two perfect uh, triangles, put make a Star of David. And uh, I, I made almost exactly the same kind of images that you that you do, um, like the magnetic force um, images and. Uh, I could get all of those from just starting out with the Star of David. I could get all kinds of different fractals. Also known as the Merkaba. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I found that when I was done doing these, these uh, mandalas, I was calmer. And it was, I guess it was kind of a form of meditation because I didn't realize how long I was sitting and, uh, and doing these drawings. And uh, anyways... Uh, and what started me doing that was when I was in my late teens, I, I had done uh, some LSD. And um, 